How's it going you guys? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, dental tartar and dental calculus and specifically uh, nutritional changes in their relationship to dental calculus and dental tartar. Uh, this is a very important video because, you know, mainstream dentistry are just, I don't even, can't, can't even find words to describe how um, primitive their understanding of fucking dental health is. And, you know, the fact is, it's not just dentistry, it's mainstream medicine in general. But I think dentistry is even more notorious for this because there's an obvious link between what you eat and your dental health. It's been proven without a shadow of a doubt um, that if sugar and refined carbohydrates were not eaten, we would not have dental cavities. It's been proven with intervention trials. It's been proven with the work of Weston Price, who founded the American Dental Association. And it's just irritating that dentists don't give a shit. Like, there's some, but the majority of them don't care. And it's fucking disturbing. Uh, we do live in the Matrix. We literally live in the fucking Matrix. Uh... <laughs> Because 99% of society is fucking brainwashed. And uh, after reading Weston Price and seeing that literally the indigenous cultures that didn't have this advanced dental health care, you know, without sugar and refined foods, they had perfect dental health. Uh, in fact, uh, and they had perfect dental health. They had straight teeth. They had perfect jaw alignment. No signs of dental decay. Or diseases of or any of these diseases at all and then as soon and then you know a decade later when they started to eat the refined carbs and stuff the westerners brought over uh now they have extreme cavities teeth are rotting out of their skull they have um crooked teeth and and jaw misalignment with the, which is a sign of epigenetics caused by the previous generation eating refined foods so literally what your parents eat can change the health of your of your teeth of the teeth of the baby we wonder why babies are being born with cancer and diabetes and and um and everything we're all we're always thinking like oh our our teeth you know our our the, our crooked teeth it's just genetics like it's not genetics that was the root cause it was a diet of your of your previous generations that was passed on over time it's almost like refined foods weaken genetics they weaken the genetics that you pass on. Like we're literally killing off our DNA with these refined foods, basically. I find Weston Price to be the most powerful evidence for the types of foods that humans should be eating and what's driving all sorts of diseases. But anyway, I, maybe I'll, de I'll dive deeper into that side of things in another video. But uh, dental calculus, is what we want to talk about here. So dental calculus is not just, um, is not the same thing as what causes dental decay. So dental decay is generally caused by, uh, so in my opinion, it's reactive oxygen species being created from bacteria and other damaging substances that are put into the mouth. Um, and so the damage caused by these bacteria creates these cavities and things. And it has been proven without a shadow of a doubt that there are back there actually are bacteria that create that create dental decay and things like that. And they these same bacteria that create plaque in the teeth are also found in plaques in Alzheimer's and plaques in ar arteriosclerosis, plaquing of the arteries. So the bacteria is present and it does create damage. But at the same time, so Weston Price was correct in the sense of repairing that damage on the teeth at least, I don't know about the other ones, requires um, an adequate supply of calcium and uh, vitamin K2 and these things. Now in, in regards to um, calculus and tartar, uh, it's common for dentists to claim that it's just the bacteria that causes the calcium in your saliva, the minerals in your saliva, to stick to the teeth. 
And I've had dentists tell me that there's nothing you can do about it, it has nothing to do with diet. Um, even if you cut out all sugar, uh, the fact is your saliva glands are directly behind the bottom teeth, which is why you always get calculus build up there. And no matter what you do, you're gonna always have to go to a dentist to clean off the calculus because calcium always resides in your saliva. And it's, and, um, it's just driven by, you know, just nothing you can do about it. Now that sounds like a great business model for somebody whose entire livelihood depends on this plaque buildup and calculus buildup. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's genetics. You're gonna be on medications the rest of your life. Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way your body works. You're gonna always have to get your plaque scraped off, even though you know, your calculus scraped off, even though these primitive cultures didn't need dentists. <laughs> and then of course I asked them, have you heard of Weston Price? And you know, they're, they don't give a shit. Um, but the fact is, it is calcium buildup on these teeth, but we gotta think about, well, why the fuck would the body build up calcium, you know, on the teeth, and then it causes these hard, you know, hard calcified plaques. So, I wondered if maybe when you have, uh, when you start to have dental decay, if the calcium buildup is a protective mechanism, and these, the tartar buildup is a protective mechanism so that your teeth don't like just shatter or just don't fall out. However, uh, obviously if you, if you allow the calculus to build up, that creates gingivitis and periodontal disease, which will cause the tooth to fall out and which isn't very protective of the body. So I don't know about that, but I'll tell you this much. Um, there's a variety of different theories on what actually causes this calculus to build up. And so, interestingly enough, people on a carnivore diet, people on a fucking carnivore diet, they report even more calculus buildup. Generally, tooth decay goes away. Generally, um, their teeth stop hurting so much. They get less, ble less bleeding of the gums. Gums stop bleeding, gums start, stop hurting, and their, their cavities a lot of times fill up but they get more calculus for some reason. Why the fuck would that happen on an all meat diet when you're not eating carbs? Obviously you have some of the dumbasses who will say, oh, it's too much protein, it's gluconeogenesis creating sugar, but <laughs> they don't fucking know what they're talking about because that's not how it works. Um, but no, uh, so there's other, there's other so, and also if that was the case, then they'd be getting more dental decay as well, but they don't. So here's the thing. Um, you're getting calcium buildup, which is creating the calculus and tartar. Uh, there are books by Raman Nigel, who was a follower of Weston Price, and he wrote a great compilation of, of information surrounding these topics. Uh, you can find his work on Amazon. I have both his books. There's Cure, Cure Tooth Decay, and then Cure Gum Disease by Raman Nigel. R-A-M-E-N-N-I-G-E-L. And while he did die of cancer, which is probably caused by the fermented cod liver oil, um, he, taught, he had a lot of information from other doctors who have cured gum disease. And what they believed it was, was an imbalance in phosphorus to calcium. So I have a couple theories on what causes this, but the first one that makes sense is when you eat more red meat without bone meal, what happens is you're eating a lot of phosphorus. So red meat is very high in phosphorus. It's got, you know, grams and grams of phosphorus in it. Um, the more red meat you eat, the more phosphorus you'll be consuming. And from what they said, it's an imbalance in phosphorus to calcium. And that makes sense that if people eat more red meat, they're getting more phosphorus. And if they have tartar buildup, it's probably too much phosphorus which creates, um, which causes calcium to leach out uh, from the bones to offset that so that, um, so that there's more calcium in the blood to offset the, the phosphorus. Um, and so his, his rec their recommendation is to eat more calcium so that you can prevent the calcium uh, leaching out of the bones. 
So maybe eating more bone meal, because that's something that I wasn't doing. Like I noticed I started to get tartar buildup in August of 2018. August of 2018. So that was six months before I went on a full-fledged carnivore diet, but I was starting to eat like, you know, pounds of meat. I was starting to eat um, lots and lots of the pasteurized cheese and things like that. Um, which would supply me with more calcium, you would think. So, I'm not sure if I need to stop eating so much phosphorus-rich fruit foods, regardless of my calcium intake, or just boost up my calcium to offset the phosphorus. Um, so there is that. Um, so maybe supplementing with more calcium, supplementing with more bone meal might help. Maybe uh, just reducing the overall phosphorus in general would, would maybe help. I'm not sure how all that works. There's not a lot of hard data on it. There's just that severe direct, direct correlation. So then another thing is that during that, like around that time when I started to consume, so around that time when I started to get tartar buildup, I started drinking coffee as my morning routine. And I noticed a direct relationship between when I started drinking coffee and then how, and then my charter buildup. So I've always eaten meat, but not nearly as much as I started eating in 2018 before I started the carnivore diet. Um, and I've always eaten cheese, but not nearly as much as around that time when I, before I started the carnivore diet. And I've been eating pasteurized cheese on a daily basis around you know, eight ounces a day, which is much more than before. But I always have been eating pasteurized cheese. One thing I didn't always do was drink coffee. Now, the weird thing is I'm searching around in the carnivore community and I see pe people that get this tartar buildup. A lot of them say they don't drink coffee and things, so they still get it. And also, most people who start the carnivore diet and get this tartar buildup, they, if they have been drinking coffee, they've been drinking coffee for their entire life. And they don't just magically drink a shit ton of extra coffee. You would think you would think if you've been drinking coffee your entire life that you would have experienced a tartar buildup before. And I know a lot of people that drink plenty of coffee and experience and don't experience tartar buildup. So I don't know why just the specific people in the carnivore community would be experiencing tartar buildup as a response to um, the coffee. And then also. You know, the cheese, most of these people don't eat cheese and dairy. And so it it's like, these are things that I can change the tartar buildup uh, to, to see if they influence my tartar buildup. Drinking more coffee, drinking less coffee, you know, um, drink, eating less cheese. But it seems like it has more to do with the red meat um, and maybe the lack of carbs. I don't know. Some people say the tartar buildup stops after a couple of months. They say it has something to do with the adaptation phase. So I hear a lot of people blaming it on oxalates, oxalate dumping. But uh, I don't buy into that crap at all. There's not a lot of objective evidence that people have posted relating tartar buildup to oxalate dumping. Um, no one tests it. They just assume that it's oxalate. Like any negative side effect you get from the carnivore diet, they're like, oh, it's oxalate dumping. And I'm just thinking to myself, dude, this sounds so much like the vegans claiming, oh, it's detox symptoms. Because essentially what oxalate dumping is supposed to be is your body detoxing the plant toxins. It's funny that like any, just any problem people have, you know, these random ass people on the internet, oh, it's oxalate dumping. I don't believe that. I think it's probably phosphorus uh, is what I think. And I think if you experience the tartar buildup for a period of time and then without changing anything, it goes away after like six months on carnivore. I think what hap I think what it probably is is calcium uh, homeostasis. And then after a number of months, your body learns to adapt to the high phosphorus intake without sacrificing your teeth. So... Um, yeah, maybe maybe the cal the calculus build up. I'm thinking the best, the most logical explanation is it's pulling calcium from the from the periodontum or, or from the alveolar bone and leaching it out into uh, leaching it out to make up for the high phosphorus count. So maybe there's too much phosphorus in the in the saliva or something, um, and the 
it compensates by bringing calcium out from the bone. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but it seems to me like it has something to do with the phosphorus to calcium ratio. But it could be oxalate dumping. I, I don't fucking think it is because I didn't really eat a shit ton of oxalates in the first place. Um, besides what it what was ever in my broccoli. And also, and it could be all the extra pasteurized dairy I started eating. And it, you know, to me, it, it seems like if it's not the phosphorus to calcium, it's probably, and I mean, I have been eating more dairy, but I, I just wonder if maybe the calcium is not as bioavailable as, you know, maybe that's a problem. Um, but it could be the coffee too, because I noticed as soon as I started drinking coffee, I got more calculus buildup, but that does not explain all these other carnivore people who don't drink coffee and get it. So if you guys have any tips on this, I'd love to hear or any, any ideas. I know a lot of people are going to insist it's oxalate dumping. I just don't think so. Let me know down in the comments. And I'll talk to you next time.